Hello everybody. I hope everyone is having a great start to their day and I hope you've enjoyed the enrollment series I've been doing so far. Uh, welcome, welcome and again give me a hashtag replay if you're watching the replay and let me know where you're from. I love seeing all the people from all over the world. It's really, really cool to see people from all over the world joining me. And also as we go, make sure to leave your comments and uh, ask questions as I go. I love the interaction. It gets lonely on the side of the camera. So I hope everybody's having a beautiful Monday. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and you did something to take care of yourself. And I hope you guys were able to watch the Leadership Lounge last week that uh, was put on by Beth Cannon Speaks. It was amazing and I'm so excited to be a part of it. I was honored to be a part of that. So um, just to introduce myself, for those of you who are new, you are new my name is Evelyn Knight. I am the Child Care Business Coach, uh, which I also have a podcast by the same name, the Child Care Business Coach. I am the CEO and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a company that helps child care business owners find success while achieving high quality standards. We also work with directors, um, so not just owners. We help directors and owners really learn how to lead and run their centers and how to have best business practices. I am also a child care center owner. I am at my center every week, just like you guys. I'm in the trenches. I know what it's like to be there. And that's really what one of the things that sets me apart as a coach is I have my own center. I'm there all the time. I have started centers from the ground up. I've literally had one built from the ground up. I've taken over an existing center that was in operation. I've reopened a center that was shut down and I have been a home provider. So um, I've also worked for child care centers. I, and when I was working in child care center as a job, I have held on. I usually do that before I start this. So let me do that for you. Let's see. Can you guys hear me okay? I just noticed that my Bluetooth is on and I don't even know where I put my Bluetooth. So I'm hoping you guys can hear me okay. Let me know and let me fix that for you. And I'm sorry, the technical difficulties, right? It is all real life. That is um, one of the things in my business. I try to be very real and unfortunately being real has these little snafus sometimes. So I do apologize for that there. Hopefully if you guys couldn't hear me and you guys for some reason my comments aren't coming up on my phone. So if I'm looking down every now and then um, I do look at my computer just to make sure and see if you guys are commenting if you have any questions for me as i'm doing this so if i do look down i do apologize that i'm not looking at you and it might seem like i'm ignoring you but i'm not i promise um so today i wanted to go over some mindset stuff and we've been really focusing on that child care enrollment piece right and today the theme of what i was um oh thanks rhonda that you can hear me so the theme that I really wanted to focus on is mindset because the entire reason I did this series um, and the last series I did, right? Every six weeks, I do a different series for you guys. The last one was Recession Proofing Your Child Care Business. This one is the uh, Proven Enrollment Strategies. The reason I do these is because I really want to make sure that you guys have the tools to keep your centers going. I know through COVID, this is a very scary time. We are all really scared of what's going to happen. And the statistics are showing, um, and I know like the NAEYC is expecting over 50% of child care centers not to make it through this time. I know my center is going to make it. I'm going to be fine because I have the business practices in place needed to make sure I'm fine. So one of my goals is really to help you. I want to make sure your centers are good too. I don't want to see my industry decimated. And it's why I started this business, right? I put a lot of time into this. Um, and so as much as I love making sure everybody's centers are alive and well, 
I do also need an income, which is why I turned it into a business, right? So that is my passion though, is to make sure and help you guys to find the success. I was once a failing business owner. I know how it feels. I almost lost my center twice. When uh, I've told the story before, but I came so close to losing my center one time that I had an eviction notice on my door and I was able to fight my way out of that. Literally, I had a 72 hour eviction notice on my center door that I was able to get out and basically just figure out a way to make it, to make, and not just to have it stay, but to make the money to stay, right? Um, and then I got really sick at one point. Um, I have a neurological disease that at, before it was diagnosed, it wasn't managed, and I didn't have systems in place at the time. When I had this, when I got sick, so my center was uh, completely reliant on me. And so when I had to suddenly step away to treat my illness, I almost lost my center again because nobody else could do my job. No one else knew what to do. So now I help other owners learn the lessons I've learned over the years to make sure I'm never in that position again. We don't know what life is going to throw at us, right? You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. If your center is solely reliant on you and it cannot function without you, you are in a very dangerous position. I am here to tell you, I never ever thought in a million years that I would be diagnosed with a neurological disease, which I still live with every day, but now at least now that it's diagnosed and under control and under a doctor's care, I can function, right? But before, I was at a point where I couldn't. And if you would have told me a year before it happened, I would never have believed you. Look at where we are now. Would any of us have believed a year ago that we would be in this situation with COVID that we're in now, right? None of us would have believed it. So many of you weren't prepared. One of the things I've learned is that we have to be prepared. And that is what I, try and bring you guys and teach is how to be prepared, how to be ready for this, why I know my center is going to make it through this, why my, I know also once again that my center is going to make it when I have to step away again, right? Um, if you've been watching me for a while, you've heard me talk about this also. My husband does have end-stage kidney disease and he is waiting for a kidney transplant. He is currently on dialysis. Um, it is very scary every day. We don't know, you know, every day is new and I know eventually, again, I'm gonna be faced with a situation where I'm going to have to step away from my center again. I'm gonna to have to step away from my business. But this time, I'm gonna be okay. And if you guys have been watching me long enough, you know that in January, my husband actually had a series of strokes. And he was in the hospital for about two weeks. And for a few weeks after that, he needed me to literally care for him 24 hours a day. It was the only way they would let him out of the hospital. And so, it was night and day difference for me um, when I was going through that. It really brought back memories of when I got sick in 2012 and had to step away from my company and how my company fell apart then. This time in January, when I had to completely step away, it was actually to December, January, uh, it was fine. They did fine. And that's because I have the systems in place now. I have the processes in place now that got me there. That's how I ended up being able to survive. And thank God, God led me to this place where I can now help you do the same thing. So the next disaster that comes in, you guys, there is always a disaster. That's something I cannot stress to you enough. Everybody is so shocked right now with COVID and everybody is just like, oh, we weren't prepared. But when you think about it, look at the news articles all the time. There is a disaster happening everywhere, some part of the world, right? The only difference with this disaster is that we're all going through it at the same time. So what we really have to think about, I mean, just really think about that. We're really just, we're all going through this disaster at the same time, but there's always a disaster and our centers have to be ready always, not just because COVID, not when it's, you know, but moving forward, we're always going to face something. So that's another reason I'm so passionate about the work I do. I uh, just to help centers be prepared uh, for the next time, because there will be a next time, guarantee it. I've been in business now for many, many years and 
Uh, I've had multiple businesses, not just childcare, and there's always a disaster. I mean, they might be years apart, but think of our lives, right? Something's always happening. The only difference with COVID is we're all in it at the same time, but there's hurricanes, earthquakes, you know, natural disasters, different things all the time. So mindset is so very important for all of this. And it's one of the biggest parts of the work I do, right? It's just helping you to see that and then get ready, get those plans in place in case you get sick tomorrow. What if you get in a car accident, your center can go on without you, right? Not just that, but making sure that you're secure. You want to be able to take vacations. You want to get your life back. I was that owner once too, where on vacation, I had to have my cell phone on me the whole time because my staff couldn't run the place without me. So I never really took a vacation. I might've been in Disneyland, but while I was in Disneyland, I had my cell phone, I was working, I was never able to detach, which is not healthy. So that is one of the big passions I have. So um, today I'm gonna actually ask you guys to do an exercise. I'd like you to take a piece of paper or even your phone. I don't care, like get your notes on your phone. And I am going to do a little exercise on vision because vision is the key to really launching yourself to the next level. It's the foundation piece I start everybody with. And I'm just going to do one of the vision exercises that I do with um, my new clients that can help you to clarify your vision as we're developing their vision and really making it become alive and we're spreading it to their staff and making it become their brand. This is one of the exercises that's really powerful that we do together. So what I'd like you to do is stop doing what you're doing and if you need to replay this later so you can do this, replay it later. But I want you to close your eyes and imagine yourself walking through your center. But I want your center now to be your dream center. I want you to pretend like you have a magic wand and you can make your center anything you want it to be within the center you already have. So I'm not saying, you know, the Disney kingdom is only gonna become your childcare center. I'm saying like, take what you have, what would you see? And if you guys wanna put it in the chats, I would love to see some of your ideas, but I wanna know what would you smell? What would you hear? What would you see? Uh, when you walk, and then I want you to imagine yourself walking from classroom to classroom. What sounds are you hearing? What kind of conversations do you hear? What are your teachers doing? What are the children doing? What colors are on the wall? What furnishings do you have? And then I want you to think about walking through your playground. What does your playground look like? Is it a nature-based playground? where it's, uh, if you guys know who Rusty Keeler is, he has the most amazing, amazing playgrounds that are all nature-based. Um, look him up if you don't, he's amazing. And look at those playgrounds. Are they, is yours nature-based? Or maybe you just want like a really cool water slide. I don't know. What, if you had a magic wand, I want you to think about what could you turn your center into? What is it gonna feel, look like? How can you make it be? And be as realistic as you can. I don't want it to be like totally where, you know, just um, I, I, these are things that are achievable, but they are also your dream, right? This is an exercise I started doing years ago. And it's interesting because I do this exercise now and I review them every five years. And, and this becomes my vision for like the next five years, right? And then I start working towards it. So it's really cool now because I can go back and look at old visions. And the very first time I did that exercise, I thought it was impossible. I never thought I would be able to achieve it. To me, it was like that unicorn that I would never actually be able to get there, but it was like just, oh, it'd be so cool if this is the scene, what I heard and what I saw and like, Oh, I know it's never gonna happen, but this is my magic wand dream, right? So ironically, I found a few months ago, I found that and I was reading over it and I was just amazed at how everything on there has come to fruition for me. My center actually emulates that original magic wand vision that I had. And there, it just really blew my mind because before, I went on, I, I just, I went on a journey to really just improve myself. And before I had gone on that journey, that just seemed unachievable. 
I never thought it would happen. So after I went on that journey and it did happen, it was just amazing, right? It's just amazing that I was able to accomplish it and the, my center today that I own looks exactly like that, right? And at the time I had owned a couple centers and you know, in order to achieve that goal, um, I had sold one and so the main thing is that I got there, I did it. And now I have the systems in place where I'm looking to open again. I'm probably gonna be opening my fourth center and we have a lot of the processes and systems where I know that that center my, that I built, my dream center that I made come true, I'm gonna be able to do it again because I have made such a duplicatable system. My center is so duplicatable and the processes and systems I have in place, which I documented all of it, all of my policies and procedures, I'm easily gonna be able to duplicate that. So what I really want you guys to take from this is it is possible. I know today it seems like it's not real, but it is, it really is. And I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how to get there. And then I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit about my coaching program where I will work with you to make sure we get there. For sure, because I've learned the keys and I know how to do it. Um, so what I want you to really think about too is when, what kind of impact do you want your center to have on your life, right? Your family, your income, on the world. And I want you to think about what kind of impact does it have now? Just think about that for a minute. What kind of impact would you like your center to have on your family, your income, and the world? And what kind of impact does it have now? How far away are those two things? Your ideal center and the center you have now, right? Or is it like you're almost there or are they so far apart? Is your center just taking up all your time and energy so by the time you get to your family, you're exhausted? Or are you almost there? Right, and I know once upon a time, I was the owner that my center, I was exhausted. I just, it felt like it was sucking the life out of me, to be honest. Um, that is how I felt. I felt like my center was sucking the life out of me. And that's, I knew I had to change. And a lot of the reasons at one point that when I first got sick, I just, I just wanted to get rid of it and sell it. So let me know in the comments too, you guys, your visions and what your, what do you want to see, right? Like if you could, again, wave a magic wand on how your center, pro, how it affects your life, what would you want it to be? So what I want to talk to you guys about is um, we always get stuck in this mindset of when I achieve this, I will do this, right? So when I am making enough money, I will start having better ratios. When I am making enough money, I will hire a business coach. When um, I start getting enrollment, I will be able to get better furnishing. I'm here to tell you guys that we have that so backwards and I was once upon a time stuck in that mindset too, but that is so backwards. The problem with that is, is that without those other things in place first, without the high quality, without somebody to guide you, you're not going to get there. That is the problem. It's not going to happen. That when will never come. The quality, the processes, it has to come first before you're going to get that income. That's when it happens. So unfortunately, we always like, oh, when this happens, I will do this. When this happens, I will do this. When my enrollment increases. The, but the problem is that, yes, you're, you know, you might take my enrollment workshop, you're going to put it into practice at your centers and you're going to get the enrollment, right? But then are you going to keep the enrollment? Again, I told you guys over and over last week, that is more important. How are you going to retain them? How are you going to keep them? Does your center have the quality to keep them, right? And you might think, and, and one of the things I wanted to tell you too, that I was very wrong about as an owner once upon a time was I perceived my center to be very high quality but I wasn't basing it on any kind of research-based standards. My business practices were a mess. Um, my finances were a mess, uh, which that is 
part of your center. We don't want to acknowledge the business end as being quality in our center, but it absolutely is. How you're running your parents' payments, the kind of way you're onboarding your staff, how you onboard new families, how your uh, new hire training happens, how, what kind of policies and procedures do you have in place? Do you have policies and procedures or do you just have an employee handbook? All of that is an indication of your quality. So that is where I see so many centers saying like, okay, well, I'll do all that when I will create all these processes and procedures and I'll hire you and work with you when this happens. But what they don't understand is it's not going to happen because they're not doing the work it's going to take to get them there. Right. And so the thinking pattern on that is so backwards. So what I would challenge you guys to do is think of the person you need to be today, the actions that you need to take today in order to be the person you want to become and have that center that you want to become because it does start with you. So what actions do you need to take in order to create that vision that you were just thinking about? What actions do you need to take in order to be the leader who is going to lead their team to your vision, right? That's what I want you to think about. Who do you need to be? And then you need to start acting like that person. And I know it's really hard, but um, I, I've told you guys, I have a couple business coaches. My child care center has, I have my financial advisor coach, and then I have my business coach who really helps me with business practices, right? And when um, I told her my goals, and you know, these are my goals, and she said, well, you need to start acting like it. If this is where your company was at, what kind of strategies would you have in place to take care of your clients? And I'm like, yeah, but I can't yet. I'm not making enough money. And, and let me give you guys, I can give you guys a real world example. Christina Richmond, my financial advisor, she teaches my clients every Wednesday, right? She's in my group, she teaches my clients. I pay her to teach my clients every Wednesday because I know that I want my company to be the whole package. I teach business processes and the business portion, she teaches the financials. Well, I knew that I wasn't providing that financial piece to my clients, right? And I knew that in order for my company to get to where I really saw it, I needed to add that because it is a very important part to quality. And if I'm gonna get you guys to the highest quality that I've achieved, then I gotta give you the whole picture, right? So when I was talking to my business advisor about it, she just basically said, if you want to get your company to that quality standards, then you need to start doing that today. And my thought was, I can't afford it. How am I gonna hire her on? How am I going to pay to have another coach come in and teach my people when I'm a startup? And you know, at the time when I was a startup, and what am I gonna do? And, so she just basically said, if you're going to achieve it, you need to start living it. So I did, I took the dive. I just decided, okay, let's do this. I'm gonna take the dive and I did it. And she was right. It just increased my quality so much that the testimonials and the referrals I started getting, and, and I know what I'm giving my clients is so much more because now they're getting that piece I was missing, right? So we have to be, the business we want to put out into the world before we can achieve it, right? So look at those things that you're not doing now. The person you're not, the leader you're not being right now. What are they lacking? Find somebody in the space that you admire, right? Find one of the leaders that you would love to be like that ECE leader and follow the things that they do. Listen, you know, find what they do and try and emulate that. That is the best. If you want their success, you've got to be like them. So if you want a successful center, if you want a five-star quality program, which I hope all of you guys do because that is just the best for the children. It really is. Research-based standards. Uh, you know, and you guys, my degrees, I, I've got several degrees, but um, the degree that pertains the most is neurological psychology. And I cannot stress to you guys how important research-based standards are. So if we're providing what's best, then all of us should want to achieve five star quality, right? And in order to get there, you gotta act like it already. And I can tell you guys, 
I know it's so scary and the thought of that it's so expensive to run a high quality center, but that is why I have a 300 child wait list. That's why I can charge so much more than people around me because I've achieved these things, right? And I wasn't afraid to do it. I was so afraid years before, right? I was so afraid and I was always struggling for enrollment. I couldn't retain. I just couldn't keep a hold of people. When I made that switch in my center and I just decided, okay, we're just gonna do this, everything flipped. I mean, the parents were seeking me out. I can pretty much charge what I want. It just, it was a game changer. So um, that's, you know, mindset. I really want you to think about that mindset. I want you to kind of have that mindset pivot and really just look at what is possible, right? And um, I want you to think about what decisions do you have to make? How are you going to find the time, right? And you need to find the time. You absolutely need to, to make the life you want to make. Um, and so I also want to talk to you guys a little bit today about my coaching program. This is something that I can really help you guys with too, is to achieve these things. I can teach you to achieve what I've achieved. It's exactly what I've done. So if you like what I've taught you during the week, if you do believe that you would like, you know, for me to be a mentor for you, if you want to try and put these things in practice, reach out to me, let's talk. I would love to have a conversation with you. We can do a consultation or you can join my membership. One of the things I hear a lot about my membership is being like, oh, I just can't afford it. And I can tell you guys, I was once upon a time, an owner who said I could not afford my coach and I was going bankrupt. When I hired my coach, that changed everything. That saved my business. So I can tell you, I now know that the months that I waited to hire her were just such a waste of money for me. And to be honest, I couldn't afford not to hire her. So I really want you guys to ask yourself, how many of you are in that boat that you're just on the fence because you know, oh, hiring a coach is gonna cost money. And let me tell you, my coaching program is very, very inexpensive for what I provide. My coaching program is only for my membership. It's $200 a month. And for what you get, that is an absolute steal. So the price is actually gonna more than double after this seminar. Um, I was actually on a call with both my business advisor and my business coach at the same time earlier today. And they both agreed this like for what I'm giving away, they said that I'm just selling myself short. And in order for me to really take my company to the next level, I do need to hire and I need, I've got to raise my rates. So, um, and you guys, I give you guys the entire system that you need to run a childcare company. Not only do I give you the entire system, but I also coach you through it. I teach you and I have so much content for you guys. I just, I have so many pre-recorded things, every document I create. So many of you guys have reached out to me asking about my new hire training program. Not only is my new hire training program a part of my membership, my onboarding, my six month onboarding process, my 30 day new hire training, not only, but I also teach you how to use it. That is all in my membership that I teach you how to use it. And that is maybe 5% of what I give you guys. It's basically the whole package on the, how to run a childcare center to make a profit and have high quality research-based standards, right? And a lot of you probably can't even wrap your mind around what this means. So what I can tell you is, I want you to look at your policies and procedures. Are they things like your time off requests, a paid vacation time, your child credit for employees, um, things like a time off to vote, uh, military leave, uh, non-compete disclosures, things like that. If that is what you think your um, policies and procedures are, that is not what a policy and procedure manual is. Those are not policies and procedures. That is an employee handbook. You do not have policies and procedures. My policies and procedures literally tell my staff how I want everything done, right? And it is in writing, it is documented, and it's in my training. I have a new hire training so that I don't have to worry about this happening. The reason it's so important is because not only do you know, do they, people understand your expectations, but it is vital that your staff needs to understand your expectations. But 
not only is that portion important of it, but the other piece that's so important is that you can use it as accountability. It's measurable accountability. So if you ever get that feeling when you go into um, the classroom and things aren't happening the way you want and you just think to yourself, I just need to fire them. They're just not do it, living up to my expectations. They're just not doing anything. I really want to challenge you and ask, have you made your expectations clear? Most employee performance issues come from leadership, not the employee. I was once a leader who thought it was my employees. I thought I needed to fire them all and start over again. And then I realized that through the development I went through, that it really was me, it wasn't them. And I've told the story before of um, one of my employees, I was so disappointed in her uh, and, and this has happened pretty recently, actually. It was about a year ago, so I keep telling the story because it's still fresh in my mind. But about a year ago, I had an employee that I was really disappointed in, and she's one of my best. And I just was, I don't know, she wasn't living up to what I thought she should be doing. And I was writing up her annual review, and when I first started and I got to her name, I thought, oh boy, this is going to get ugly. And my first thought was, this is not going to be good at all. By the time I was done with it, I was really, really shocked. And let me tell you guys, um, I've written my annual reviews. I created it. They are based on the expectations that I set up for my staff. So my staff has their uh, trainings, right, that we provide. They have coaching and they have our new hire training. They have ongoing trainings and all this stuff. All of that I've written based on my expectations of that. I wrote my evaluation and my employee evaluations based on those expectations that I have communicated with my staff. This lady's um, annual review was nearly perfect. It was one of the best ones I have ever done. I've never had such a good annual review. I really had to do some soul searching because of that. I had to step back when I looked at it and thought, wow, this is the closest to a perfect annual review I've ever done. Yeah, I thought she was gonna do awful. I literally thought if there was such a thing as failing an annual review, she would have failed. So I realized that the problem was me, not her. The problem was that I had not set up the proper expectations. I had unrealistic expectations. So here I was in my mind condemning one of the best employees I had, but it was really my fault. It was my lack of leadership that was causing her to fail in my eyes. So I challenge you guys, do you have policies and procedures or do you just have an employee handbook? Are you verbalizing your expectations? And the reason that I have these things is because these it happens, right? So the reason I created my annual reviews the way they are, I don't have generic anything, everything is created, is to avoid these situations. I could have lost an amazing woman that works for me, an amazing employee, had I not created this annual review, right? I could have lost one of the best teachers had because of my misperception of what was going on and because of my lack of communication. So I'm really thankful that I have done all of that because it saved me from losing her. And um, you know, it just really opened my eyes. And, and, I, and you guys, I have so many stories like this. This is just the most recent one that happened. But that's why you have check and balance systems in place. Not only are check and balance systems great for your staff to make sure that they're doing the jobs you want them to do the way you want it done, but they're also great to keep us accountable and to keep us just realistic and seeing the reality of what's happening around us. So I want to challenge you guys. If you're thinking about joining my coaching program, now is the time. Like I said, when this series ends, which it ends on Wednesday, my prices are going to be doubling. So now is the time. My membership is only $200 a month. That's all it is. And um, I also do private coaching. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I don't do a lot of private coaching anymore. I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm starting to pull away from private coaching, but um, I do take it on a need basis. Uh, most of my clients work just fine within my membership group. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about my the way that our membership group works. Um, we meet three times a week. And, and if you can't meet, it's okay. We do record everything and post it later. 
So we meet every Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and that's when I teach. I will teach you guys something uh, every week, and basically that goes to like the business management portion, right? All of those teachings I've done in the past have been recorded, and you can watch them on replay. So I have plenty of units for you to go through. If you know, and, and if you can't make the Tuesday meetings, those get posted. Wednesday, Christina, my financial advisor, teaches on finances and really helps you get a hold of that financial literacy from a business sense. On Wednesday, or on Thursday, sorry, I have open office hours, which I just make myself available to you. You can come on and ask me questions and we just work through problems together on Thursdays. Uh, my director, Brandy, does a monthly uh, classroom management session. Brandy, I've told you, I've probably told you guys before, she is a master at observations uh, and uh, doing coaching, right? She's an amazing like coach for the classrooms. So she really teaches you guys that. And um, her, she literally is able to do an observation and meeting with every one of our classrooms and teachers every month, every month. And she's a very busy director, but every month she does observations and every teacher and classroom get a touch point with uh, feedback. So she'll be training on things like that within the membership. We also do um, accountability calls. So I'll do one uh, 30 minute a month accountability call with you guys to make sure that I'm coaching you too. I tell you guys how important coaching is, right? Only 80%, well, 5% uh, of what you're, or, uh, sorry, my, I'm tired today, if you can tell, because my statistics are off. But I've told you guys before, very little of what you learn in the training is actually ever, um, implemented, right? But over 80% of what you are coached on is implemented. So I'm not going to just train you guys without coaching you. Coaching is too important. So we do meet monthly as a coaching call also. So definitely, if you guys are thinking about joining, if you're not sure, I'm happy to chat with you on the phone We can or Zoom, whatever you prefer. Reach out to me, you can message me or my consult. Um, I posted last week, I think it was, a link straight to my calendar. It's If you wanna just go straight on there and schedule a time to talk to me, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys to see if we are a fit, if you, you, know, if you can use my services, um, or if you've got more questions about my membership, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys about that. But if you're also just ready to take the plunge and join my membership group, uh, I did post the link to that also. So you guys can do that too. So again, you know, I really hope to see more of you guys in the membership and I hope I can work and help to make more of your center successful and um, work with you guys on one-on-one -on -one instead of just the Facebook where we don't actually get to chat or anything. So that is what I have for you guys today. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your week. Um, tomorrow I will be on a couple different times with some of my clients and we'll be just going over some of the lessons that they've learned and things that they've used to help their centers. So have a wonderful rest of your days, everybody. Bye.